On today's video, we're going to talk about avoiding line twists and line loops. Hey there outdoor YouTubers, it's Dave Knetter from Knetter's Practical Outdoors. Now, has this ever happened to you guys? You're out fishing, your line's not giving you any problems, then at some point during the trip, you start developing these line twists. Well, there's a lot of different ways that you can cause line twists, and maybe some of them you guys haven't even considered. Uh, think about being out uh, maybe walleye fishing, uh, and you're trolling crankbaits. Okay, a crankbait like this, goes through the water, just kind of wiggles back and forth. It really should never cause line twists, right? Well, sort of yes, sort of no. You can be trolling crankbaits, and if somehow this crank gets fouled up, it can start to spin, okay? And, and I know some of you guys have experienced this. Maybe a brushed bottom and kind of flipped up on itself. The line got wrapped around it kind of funny. You pick up a weed, you pick up a stick, you pick up a zebra mussel, and now all of a sudden this crankbait that's only supposed to wiggle back and forth is back there just rolling and spinning and causing line twists. Okay? You reel it in, maybe you didn't notice it, you know, maybe it's behind a planer board. You know, it's pretty hard to tell if a lure gets fouled behind a planer board. And maybe you're dragging it around for a while and you're reeling it in and it's kind of up on the surface and it's and it's not really coming in right. And then uh, you're reeling it and it kind of skips across the water and as soon as that line goes slack it just kind of rolls up in a big twist. So that's how these crankbaits can actually impose line twists on your line. Fish better. Uh-huh. Got a fish better. Another thing that'll cause line twists for you is if you are fishing with a rig or a lure that actually does spin and you're not using the proper hardware with it, right? Some of the things that'll kind of spin on you sometimes these spoons will spin on you sometimes. Uh, inline spinners can spin on you sometimes. It's a smaller inline spinner. Uh, crawler harnesses, they'll spin on you sometimes. And I don't mean just the spinner, but the actual body of the lure, or in this case, you know, the line will actually start to spin on you. And it can induce line twists if you're fishing with them and you're not using the proper hardware. A good swivel or maybe a good keel sinker uh, like this one to keep your line from twisting. So anything that actually spins in the water can induce uh, line twists into your line. Another lure that will cause line twists for you that you might not have thought of is certain jigs. And you might be like, no, nah, jigs don't, uh, they don't cause line twists. But if you think about it, you cast out and you're letting that jig a lot of times fall right to the bottom and certain jigs will spin all the way to the bottom, okay? And they'll induce line twists into your line. And you know, a lot of times when you're jig fishing, you do want to tie your line directly to them. You know, you don't want to be using like a swivel snap or anything like that. Uh, so most of the time when I'm jig fishing, I will tie a line directly to the jig, but that line will just be a chunk of leader, and then I'll have a small swivel, and then the main line from there. And that helps eliminate that jig from inducing uh, twists into the line. You know, another way that you can develop line twists, and I mostly see this in uh, maybe, you know, less experienced anglers. Uh, say they got a snag, right? They got a snag, they're just pulling on it, they're trying to break it free, and then they're just reeling on it, and, and it's, it's not getting them anywhere, but they're just sitting there and they're cranking away on their spinning gear. Well, all you're doing is, is just inducing twist after twist into your line when you do that. And it's the same thing if you're fighting a, a little bit bigger fish maybe that isn't coming right in fish is putting up a little bit of a tussle and you know again I see this in younger you know less experienced anglers 
they're pulling and they're just reeling and reeling even though nothing's coming in the fish isn't giving any ground and they're just sitting there and inducing twist after twist into the line so you want to kind of try to avoid that too another thing that can cause line twists in your line uh, maybe some of you guys fish uh, lakes that are kind of like the lakes I fish where you might be out reeling in small pike after small pike after small pike and depending on how they're hooked but a, a lot of times you know they're kind of hooked in a way where they just come in spinning you know just like the prop on your motor that can actually cause line twists in your line you know if you don't have the proper hardware to kind of combat it okay those are things to watch for to help you avoid getting line twists but what if you already got them what if one of those things happen and you've already got the line twists what do you do to get it out well one of the best things you can do um, if you're out in a boat it works real good but even in your yard you can you can do this okay take all the hardware off the pole that you're fishing with okay just have your bare line okay open up your bale and if you're out in a boat maybe trolling along would be the best scenario get that line down to the water and kind of just feed it out until the water kind of grabs your line and it's actually pulling it off okay and and if you're in your yard you can actually stand in the yard maybe you can have somebody grab your line and walk away from you with your line open bail walk away like two cast distances or if you're trolling with the setup um, at least the the length that you troll plus a little bit more and then once you get that distance of line out okay maybe a, a two casts or the trolling distance plus a little more then go ahead and remember no hardware on this line go ahead and reel it in through pinched fingers okay and as you're reeling it in all those line twists should just keep working their way to the end of the line that has no hardware on it and by the time you reel it all in all those line twists should have just unraveled right off the end of the line that trick really works good like I say if you develop some line twists give that a try I'm sure it'll work for you now before we move on to the line loops okay we've got kind of an extra special bonus feature in this video now last Saturday at Camaro's Crawlers it's my one and only sponsor Camaro's Crawlers Ronnie put on a fishing seminar on how to identify fish on your fish finder all right he called around he got a hold of some of the big names in walleye fishing around the Midwest and he's gonna have him come in and do this uh, seminar on how to identify fish on your fish finder but the problem was they were all kind of uh, out of his price range you know what I mean uh, Camaro's Crawlers, it's just a small little bait shop that Ronnie runs from his parents' house where he lives. So he doesn't really have that big of a budget. But he had already ran the flyers, he had already done the advertising. So he decided to go ahead and put the seminar on himself. All right. So Ronnie went out, he got the fish finder out of his dad's boat, he set it up in the shop, and Ronnie put on the seminar on how to identify fish on your fish finder okay and he recorded it and I thought I'd show you guys some of the highlights from that fishing seminar so here's Ronnie Camaro with how to identify fish on your fish finder all right guys hey thanks for coming out to Camaro's crawlers uh, for the seminar on how to identify fish on your fish finder let's just go ahead and we'll just get right into it okay you're out in the boat you're looking at your fish finder this right there that's the bottom okay all right and then you see this mark right here with the 27 by it that's a fish okay right there that's a fish all right there's another mark with a 13 by it that's a fish that fish is 13 feet down right by it there's a darker colored fish there's a lighter colored fish at 17 feet another fish at 14 feet okay uh, this mark right here that mark is unidentifiable but right next to it at 37 feet there's a fish fish darker fish at 27 feet fish that little speck unidentifiable okay it, there's a fish at 13 feet so basically the marks that kind of look like a fish those are the fish okay well I guess that was the one highlight of the uh, fishing seminar at Camaro's Crawlers on how to identify fish on your fish finder. So, on to line loops, alright? 
Uh, you guys, I'm sure, have all experienced this, right? You're out fishing, right? You're fishing with your spinning gear, you're casting away, casting, casting, reeling in, no issues, no issues. Then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, you go to cast, and boop, this big pukey mess of snarled up line comes off your spool. And it's like, what in the world? You know, how in the world did that mess get in there? Well, I think about 99% of the time, it's one of two things happens, okay? One of them is, okay, you're casting, you cast out, of course, you cast out, your bale's open, right? The line goes off, and then I know a lot of you guys, when you go to close the bale, you just crank the reel handle to automatically close the bale, right? And sometimes, under that slack line condition, you'll get a little loop in the line. You know, the line won't be nice and tight to the spool, there'll just be a little excess, a little loop. And then you reel in over the top of it, then the next time you go to cast, right, you open up the bale again and you go to cast, and that line that's coming off first kind of grabs that loop. And that loop, of course, is buried underneath some of the line, but it grabs it and it kind of prematurely yanks it out before it should be coming off, and then you get this snarled mess, okay? And, you know, another way that that happens is, again, you're closing that bale uh, under a slack line condition, and instead of the line starting to wrap on the spool where it's supposed to, sometimes it'll start to wrap on the, on the front of the spool, either on the drag adjustment or just the front of the spool, maybe even just a few loops around, and then it'll find its way onto the spool where it's supposed to be, and again, same scenario. You go to cast, that line comes off, and it pulls on that loop kind of prematurely. Before, uh, before that line is supposed to come off, it's pulling on that loop, and bonk, you kind of get that pukey mess that comes up. So, what do we do to combat that, right? Well, this is what I do, and, and it really does seem to work pretty good. Okay, whenever I'm fishing with spinning gear, right, you cast out, bales open, line goes out, and... I always close my bale by hand, okay? I always reach down, I close the bale by hand, and then as long as my hand's down there, I just kind of give the line a quick little pull, I look down there, make sure there's no uh, excessive loops, and then you're good to go. And then you're kind of reeling on a little bit more tight line usually, okay? So again, cast out, <whistles> cast out, reach down, close the bale by hand, and just kind of pull on the line a little bit so there's no slack, there's no loop there, and then start reeling. And I'll tell you what guys, that really eliminates a lot of those line problems by doing that. Okay guys, I hope some of these things help you out when you're out on the water, right? Uh, ways to avoid getting line twists, ways to uh, get rid of the line twists once you have them, um, ways to maybe avoid getting those line loops and puking out that big mess when you're casting with your spinning gear, and heck, Maybe you guys even picked up a few tips on how to identify fish on your fish finder. Maybe. Maybe not. I don't know. But anyways, hey guys, either way, remember to hunt fish, laugh, repeat. This is Dave Knetter from Knetter's Practical Outdoors. Hey, thanks for watching and God bless.